This is Mr. Martin. These are uh, the video notes for Math Analysis, Section 11.1. .1. This is the third of uh, three videos for this handout. Um, so we were just talking about um, when uh, direct substitution fails because it gives you division by zero, you need to change the fraction in some way into an expression where plugging in does work. So we have a couple different techniques here, six actually, that we'll be working with. Um, foiling, factoring, finding the least common denominator, um, canceling, simplification, or conjugate multiplication. So we're going to look at uh, three examples here, and you'll hit those other types of examples when you do the uh, practice problems. So um, for this first example, uh, we've got the limit as x approaches negative 2 of uh, this expression. And we can see when we plug negative 2 into the denominator, we're going to get 0. So what we want to do is we want to factor. So we're, we're going to factor the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator is going to factor to x minus 3 times x plus 2. And the denominator is going to factor to x plus 2 times x minus 1. And we have a common term, so we're going to um, cancel those out. And then once we do that, we can use direct substitution. And now we'll plug in our value of negative 2. So I have negative 2 minus 3 over negative 2 minus 1, which gives us negative 5 over negative 3, or a limit of 5 thirds. OK, so although this, again, important concept with limits, although this function is not defined at negative 2, the limit as we approach negative 2 is going to be 5 thirds. All right, so uh, go ahead and uh, pause the video and uh, give this one a try. Um, or you can uh, work through it as I work through it. Um, so again, we can't plug in. Um, Well, we could plug in 3 here, but we're going to get uh, 0. But let's take a look anyway with the factoring. So we would have um, x plus 3 times x minus 3. I believe there's a typo here, and this should be minus. So we're going to make that a minus. Subtraction there. OK, and then uh, x minus 3 in the denominator. That's why we would get 0 in the denominator. So make sure you make that correction there correction. And then these two terms are going to cancel out by direct substitution. Now our limit's going to be 3 plus 3, or 9. All right, so let's take a look at uh, one more example here. We've got uh, the tangent, uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of the tangent of x over x. And again, we can't plug in 0 because we'll have uh, 0 in the denominator. So we're going to use uh, trig identity and a result from a previous video to help us solve this one. So I'm going to change this to the limit as x approaches 0. And I'm going to change uh, tangent to sine x over cosine x. And then it's times 1 over x. That's this x over here is 1 over x. And then I'm going to rearrange a little bit. So I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x times, I'm going to use my product property of limits, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x. So it's just kind of rearranging. And in the previous video, we figured out that this limit, we used a chart to figure out that that limit is equal to 1. And we can use direct substitution on this part, uh, plug in 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So this limit is also 1. So the limit of tan x over x is just going to be 1. So an example of using uh, our identities to help us and also another uh, previously solved problem to help us. So when we talk about limits, we're really talking about approaching a value from the left and the right. That would be a two-sided limit. But sometimes we may want to talk about one-sided limits. So we may want to talk about a right-hand limit. Notice the little plus sign there. So this is the limit as x approaches c from the positive side, from the right of f of x. OK, 
Okay, or if you notice the little minus sign here, this is the limit as x approaches c from the negative side from the left of our function. So if there isn't a plus or a minus, then we're talking about approaching it from both sides at the same time. And we already talked about the fact that if it doesn't approach the same value from the left and the right, then there is no limit. However, if we're approaching it from the left or the right separately, then there could be a limit. So again, our note here, if there's no plus or minus in here, then what this is implying is that we're approaching it from the right, there's our little plus, and from the left at the same time. And in order for there to be a limit, you know, it has to fulfill those other requirements that we talked about in the other video. So um, as always, if you have any questions, make sure you write those down in the margins of your notes so you don't forget. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.